This module will present residential wall construction methods, wall finishes, and insulation methods. The way walls are built often dictates how they're insulated and also how additional insulation could be added later as an upgrade. Uh, wall finishes on the exterior can also help predict the energy performance of a home. So in this module we'll cover traditional wall framing methods, wall framing with EPS insulation, wall framing with optimum value engineering, structural brick, structural concrete block, structural insulated panels, insulated concrete forms, straw bale construction, wall finishes, and wall insulation methods. So let's get started. Lightwood framing is the most popular method to build homes in the United States. It's very versatile and allows for accessible materials to be used. And framing methods to build a wall are fairly standard and consist of uh, fairly recognizable elements and once a carpenter learns the basics it's very easy to get a set of dimensions and build a wall. Uh, some of the more important terms to know that will apply to the energy performance of a wall include the wall studs which are the vertical members that support uh, the weight of floors above and their spacing and thickness is very important and headers which are used to span openings but also can take up a lot of space of wood in the wall and displace uh, where we can place insulation. And again they're usually located above windows and doors and help span that opening as a structural member. Wall studs are typically 2x4 or 2x6 framing members as they're referred to in the field. Their actual depth however is three and a half inches or five and a half inches respectively uh, and as such they will allow for variable depths of insulation in a particular wall cavity uh, so these images show uh, framed members which in this case are both two by six wall framing allowing for a five and a half inch deep wall cavity that we can fill with insulation in some regions of the u.s. homes are being built with two by eight studs which would provide a seven and a quarter inch cavity for insulation. Wood framing with EPS sheathing is a technique that's not as common as regular wall framing but it does provide an opportunity to add uh, much additional insulation to a traditional wall system. It can be applied in layers and built up uh, with some variable techniques and specialty materials uh, it can also be applied um, as sheathing over top of a traditionally framed wall. Uh, one of its biggest advantages is that it eliminates the thermal break that a wall stud uh, introduces uh, because wall studs interrupt the insulation in our uh, wall framing uh, and the EPS sheathing spans across that and provides a continuous surface of insulation and can dramatically improve the performance of a wall. Uh, BuildingScience.com has a great uh, description of different techniques of applying EPS sheathing and their respective properties. Wood framing with optimum value engineering is a newer method. It's also referred to as advanced framing and it's a technique in which additional care is taken to eliminate framing members uh, that are not necessarily required but would be included in a traditional framing approach. Uh, the reason that we would do this is to allow for additional insulation in the wall cavity and sometimes that can result in an increase of 15 to 20 percent of improvement in additional wall cavity space uh, and room for insulation. So taking a look at a advanced or optimum value engineering framing technique and some key features. Uh, one of the features would be using just two wall studs at the corners as opposed to the traditionally uh, four stud framing corners or th uh, three or four. Uh, another uh, example is at windows where we can reduce the number of framing methods just by shifting the techniques that we use uh, to build the walls. We often use headers over windows and doors even if it's a non-load bearing wall. Uh, optimum value engineering can eliminate uh, those headers and create more room for insulation. Another important feature of uh, optimum value engineered walls and, and framing methods are the alignment of the roof trusses uh, with the wall studs. So here's a close-up image of how each roof truss spans across the wall surface directly over top of a wall stud. In some framing methods, uh, we don't do this. We actually uh, use a different spacing for the roof trusses 
than the wall studs and it's impossible to align them but in optimum value engineering care is taken to space the roof trusses and the wall studs at the same distance so that they can be aligned. When you do this the plates or horizontal members in the wall framing methods can be reduced from a double member to a single method single member and that saves quite a lot of wood uh, in the process. Another technique that's used in optimum value engineering is to insulate headers and also eliminate jack studs with additional uh, framing techniques so this reduces wood and also can make that header which in many cases was framed as solid wood to now have a layer of insulation inside it and promote and contribute to the overall improved performance of the wall construction method. Structural brick masonry is fairly rare in the United States uh, it usually consists of two layers of brick over concrete block. Uh, typically when you look at a brick surface it's only a veneer and not a structural member but in this case uh, with structural brick uh, the brick is actually carrying the weight of the walls and the roof above. Uh, generally this is only seen in older homes and newer brick homes are usually just uh, clad with brick or brick veneer. Some ways to detect the existence of structural brick is the use of arches over top of doorways. Another telltale sign is windows which are pushed all the way up to the top of the wall to eliminate the need of a spanning member over top of them. And another telltale sign is the use of header rows in which uh, every five or six courses of brick uh, there's a row of bricks that are laid on edge which is being used to tie two courses of structural brick together. Again, not as common, but there are some telltale signs that you can use to spot structural brick masonry. Concrete block is popular in regions where there's high winds and hurricanes. Uh, it can also be built at a fairly low cost and it's a common uh, method to build uh, structures in developing countries or nations. Uh, they're typically built in warmer climates and often have little or no insulation. Uh, here's an image of a uh, concrete masonry unit wall under construction and here's a case where the concrete block has been used as a significant contribution to the architecture so uh, these aren't always associated with uh, low budget structures. They can be used for their uh, value as high thermal mass elements and they're also very durable and can be finished uh, and used as the interior and the exterior finished surface. Straw bell construction is one of my favorite ways to build a house. It's popular with do-it-yourself home builders uh, and it consists of stacked straw bales uh, with wood frame members that surround them and these surfaces are finished with stucco or plaster. Uh, they're generally unmistakably thick, uh, 20 to 25 inches deep uh, walls um, and if you're in doubt that it's actually made of straw, most homes that apply this technique include a truth window where you can actually see uh, the straw somewhere inside uh, the house. 